With the season coming to a close, Miles the Monster welcomes the fans and teams of the K&N Pro Series to Dover International Speedway. And if you can just do a little something about the weather, NASCAR will sneak in this championship race at the High Bank Concrete Mile. The weather is certainly gray, but the outlook is very bright for the drivers of the K&N Series, like 25-year-old Enrique Baca getting his third chance today, and Spencer Davis still regrouping after leading the championship, then changing rides. Harrison Burton tries to keep mechanical gremlins away that have hurt him this season, and it was one year ago Colin Cabry capped his rookie season with a victory at the Monster. Welcome, everyone, to the Dover 125, the culmination of the 2016 K&M Pro Series East season. I'm Dave Burns, along with Parker Kligerman. Derek Bernasiglio joins us in just a moment. And Parker, as you can see, it's just about 5 o'clock in the evening, and even after all the weather issues, they're getting this one started on time. That is correct, Dave. And actually, they missed first practice because of rain, final practice, but were able to take the qualifying time and use that to practice, which is crucial for us. some of these drivers that have never been to Dover. Just a quick 30 minutes, and even for the veterans, one going for a championship, another trying to win the race. It's an important fact that they got some time on the track here this afternoon. Here's how the points play out right now. 29 points behind for Kyle Benjamin. He could still do it if Haley has problems, Park. That's true, and that's the key point here is if Haley has problems. Kyle Benjamin can focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's going out and leading the most laps possible and trying to win this race, and whatever happens, happens for, uh, for Haley. Only those two with a shot at the title. Derek? Well, guys, rain canceled qualifying here for the NASCAR K&N Pro Series at the Dover International Speedway. That puts the point leader and championship contender, Justin Haley, on the pole today, and with a championship in sight, what kind of plan do you have going into this race? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a tough one. You know, I'm kind of glad the rain came. Uh, that way I didn't have to qualify. So, um, you know, we're just going to try to stay clean today, try to keep out of our own way and everyone else's way and just uh, get a solid finish like we have all year. You know, we've been really consistent. I've been very thankful to be with A. Scott Justin Lerks. Uh, they've given me so much in my career, and I can't thank everyone else enough. So um, hopefully we'll use the clean air as an advantage when it goes green here and uh, hopefully get a championship. But, you know, m no matter what happens, we had a killer season, and, I'm proud to be uh, standing here in this position. You're in a comfortable spot for the championship, but also in a good position for the win today. Will you points race? Uh, I don't know. We definitely want to lead a lap because leading a lap will, will be a point. So uh, we'll take that, try to lead a few laps, and then uh, just kind of settle into a rhythm, keep the tires underneath me, and just have a, a solid race like we have. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a tricky day, but hopefully we can get the job done. Well, he scored top tens in every single race this year, and if Justin Haley can do that today, he'll walk away with the title. And happy not to go qualifying, Parker. Sounds to me like he's trying to minimize the risks. Yeah, well, that and also being able to start up front with the arrow involved here. He's going to have clean air, which is so important at the Monster Mile right off the bat, and I think that kind of settles his mind a little bit that he knows he can just focus solely on the race. Two wins for him, going for a third and a championship today. K&N Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by K&N High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. Back with you at Dover getting ready for 125 laps to send the 2016 K&N Pro Series East into the books. And before we do that, we want to catch up with a little more information on the guy who has a chance to win that championship this afternoon. And that is Justin Haley. Let's go back to Derek. Well, our Who to Watch driver today will be that blue number five starting on the pole. That'll be Justin Haley, your point leader. Now, the field was set according to points because rain washed out qualifying. But Justin has been Mr. Consistency all season long. Top tens in every single race this season. And if he does just that this afternoon, he's going to walk out of here a NASCAR K&N Pro Series champion. So he's got to kind of manage it, Parker. How difficult is that to do? Well, it is hard to manage that because you, you almost race conservatively, and that's not always a fun way to race. It's not a way that anyone growing up racing wants to race, but when you're trying to win a championship, it's bigger than one single race. It's the body of a season, an entire body of work over a season that you've put together here that all culminates with this one race, and that's what Justin Haley's trying to do here today. Look at how this track lays out. This place will get your attention in a hurry. 
It will. This is one of the few places, as a race car driver, you have to, after your first few laps here, for many of these drivers, you have to remember to do one thing, and that is breathe. I've had the first time I came off this racetrack, I remember coming in and panting because I had held my breath for three or four laps. It's incredibly intense. And as you look at the starting lineup, you see that the points contenders right there, front row, that'll be exciting to watch. But also, Parker, as we go down through, several drivers that haven't done so well in the points, and even a couple that have only run a few races in very fast cars, will be starting in the back. That'll be fun to watch Jesse Little in row 10, one of them. That would be great to watch. It's always fun to see fast cars have to come through the field. You had Colin Currybury there in the top 10, who actually won this race last year, felt really good after practice. So I think we're going to see a lot of fast cars more mixed up in the field here, passing cars get to the front. Good field of 24. Another one to notice, Brandon McReynolds in that 21. Been very quick in the races that he's entered this year. It has been. He's taken this opportunity by the neck or the scruff of the neck and gone out there and done a great job of this car, and I think he's really relishing it here in this last race of the season. Excited to be racing the Monster Mile and in front of the Sprint Cup Series and the Xfinity Series. They're both here this weekend for their big... Uh, one of them's a chase-clinching race. The other one's right in between the first round. That'd be the Xfinity. But it's all about K&N Pro Series right now for Kyle Benjamin on the outside. Can he get enough done today to beat the five of Justin Haley and take the championship? Uh, one at Bristol in his debut, which was impressive, and hopes to be going full-time with him next year, although no plans announced for that group. Well, we know how fast that that uh, Mark McClure racing team has been at the road courses of Austin Sindrick driving, so it's definitely, and also winning there, Chad Fincham at Bristol, it's definitely been an impressive first season for that race team. Okay, Noah has it gathered up. He's going to go for another try here on Hunter Bays. <laughs> and you'll see this at Dover. You'll take a run at a driver. You might get where you see him get a little bit loose and lose a little bit there to Hunter Bays off turn four. And then you need to cool off your tires, settle back in your rhythm, and then take another run at it. And that's what you'll see here a lot at Dover. Just underway, and Justin Haley trying to pad that championship position here at Dover. Back at Dover, there was a quick caution for debris on the racetrack. The field is coming back to green at lap 40. The lead has been all Justin Haley all day long, but Kyle Benjamin's 40 was catching him before we went to break. Let's see what Kyle has for him in this run. A lot better restart by Kyle Benjamin there. He wasn't quite as uh, taken off guard as he was at the initial start of the race by Justin Haley. Still a good jump by Justin Haley, but definitely more competitive start from Kyle Benjamin. Down into turn three, Holloman in the pink and black 49 on the outside. Tyler Dipple down low, and maybe in the middle, the 21 to McReynolds. Whoa, they get really loose off of turn four. McReynolds continues his charge through the field there, but see, as you see that rubber getting laid down now, already just 40 laps in the race, we're seeing those black streaks on the concrete. That's allowing these drivers to move around their lines. So while we watch this battle in the back, up front, it's all about the championship, Derek. You know, guys, we have to remember there were 27 cars that started this race at the drop of the green. Justin Haley needs to finish 25th or better to lock up the championship. The 0-9 of Christian Solaya just retired from this race, so if one more car drops out, Justin Haley has become the new champion. Well, there you go. And by the way, you see the sprinkles on the camera lens there, Parker. This is all around the speedways. We have a battle for the lead, so they've got to be a little careful. Whoa, and Kyle Benjamin does the perfect movement of arrow there. He packs the air on the left rear of Justin Haley, moves him up the track a little bit. You can see that Kyle Benjamin's car is really sticking the bottom. Just looks like he's able to cut in the center a little bit better than Justin Haley, and that's a perfect pass at Dover. What does that feel like? Oh, trouble for John Holloman in the 49. He got up out of the groove and may have tagged the wall. Looked like he might have had a tire coming down. Yeah, we saw how high up on the restart he was running, almost in the third groove. You have to wonder if maybe he ran over something there. I'm not exactly sure what up happened there, but we did see him as one of the first cars way up out in the third groove. The field remains under green, and if Holloman doesn't have a terminal issue, he'll be back on track. So that's not the one car that Haley needs. And now that Benjamin's taking the lead, boy, I bet he'd love to see someone else drop out. I know, but I've got to tell you, Justin Haley right now is focused on one thing as a race car driver, and that's trying to get that lead back in Kyle Benjamin. Let's learn more about the would-be champion in the K&M Pro Series East in 2016. Hi, I'm Justin Haley, driving the number five Ron Auto Group Chevrolet out of Winnemac, Indiana. Uh, you know, it was just getting a little confusing with J.J. Haley, and um, Justin sounds a little more professional, so um, just 
It's just a different year. Uh, I guess new name, it's a little weird, but uh, I felt like we brought strong speed to all the tracks. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a little tough. We uh, really didn't have the outcomes we, we were looking for, but practice and qualifying speed was always there. Um, just, they seem kind of short, but um, on these Goodyear buy supply tires, it's, uh, they, it's where it wears them out really, really fast. So you just got to consider your tires. I'm definitely going to go for the championship and win a lot, a lot of races and, um, you know, just, just prove myself in the, in the NASCAR. And as we were watching that piece, the one of Spencer Davis has gotten up into the wall. And that's going to bring out the caution. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to look there, maybe if they have a right front down or some sort of tire issue as he got up there. I, as I said before, we saw with John Holloman, he was running way up high, and just sometimes when you're the first car up there, you see all that debris up next to the wall. As you as the drivers move up, they kind of force that higher up. But when you're the first car, you can might maybe even run over something here as we seem to have a replay. Oh, straight oh, up yeah. he goes definitely a right front issue there so one thing we talked about at the beginning is how brutal this racetrack is on tires especially when there isn't rubber to start and that's where you have to really try and take care of that right front until the rubber's laid down the racetrack otherwise you can tear up that right front either by having too much camber or just being too aggressive right off the bat when there isn't rubber on the racetrack well, and the team is indicating to nascar that they are pulling that one car off with that damage that will hand the championship to Justin Haley, I hand it to him. He has earned it this year with two wins and consistency like you wouldn't believe. An average finish of 3.4, which is incredible for Haley all season long. And that car dropping out means there's no way that Kyle Benjamin, even if he wins the race, can get enough points to pass him. And that is nice. It, 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 wouldn't you like to be in a race and just suddenly be told, hey, we're the champion now? So I think he's got to have a big smile on his face at this time. But also, you know, with that name change this year, we've seen a Justin Haley that's come into this series and absolutely gone out there to dominate. We heard him talk about at the beginning of the season that he wanted to wait, win races and fight for a championship, and he's definitely done that this season. Hard to believe it's the same driver sometimes. I mean, he was quick last year, but just didn't have the consistency, couldn't put the finishes together, but it was his rookie season, and Parker, this series is a step up. It definitely is, and I've actually raced against Justin a couple times this year in the ARCA series. I can tell you that one thing that I've seen just being able, being able to race against him is he's a smart driver, and I think last season, you know, he learned a lot of lessons about in stock car racing that it isn't about being the fastest car to start. It's about how you finish, right? And that's how you win championships, and he's definitely proven that over this season that he's learned ways to manage the, manage the races better and be better at the end of the races than just from the start. So there it is. The championship has been decided. Now let's have some fun, shall we? Kyle Benjamin is on the front row with last year's winner, Colin Cabry. Then Haley, with nothing to lose, is inside of row two with Brynamit Reynolds to his outside. Back under green at Dover. Really, another really good restart for the leader on the bottom this first time by Kyle Benjamin being the leader but that outside line just seems to struggle as you saw Colin Cabry just not really get up to speed or, or was caught off guard by where Kyle Benjamin actually got on the throttle but that's not the kind of restart you want to have if you're in Colin Cabry's position there on the outside you know you want to be able to get a good enough restart that you can stay on that right rear quarter panel maybe get Kyle Benjamin a little bit loose and be able to take the lead that way and now he's been able to he's actually fallen back to third you saw it out on the apron there Holloman's car coming back into the event but with Celaya and the one of Spencer Davis out. That'll keep the championship in a clinched form for the five of Justin Haley. And now he has one singular focus, and that is that 40 car of Kyle Benjamin in his windshield right now, trying to catch him and take this lead and be able to talk to his crew chief about what he needs come the end of this first half of the race to be better in the second half and beat that 40 car. And Parker, I think it's been an interesting conversation this year about the 40 team uh, and occasionally the 41 car, which they've entered off and on. This was a startup team with some very experienced people. Had they been in motion prior to this season, I think they would have given that five a run for his money there is no doubt in my mind that team has been incredibly fast but also incredibly fast young driver there and kyle benjamin i've actually been able to race against him as well in the arca series we battled at orp earlier this year and i really noticed that he's able to take that speed that he shows in practice and qualifying and apply it to the longevity of a race and that's showing a lot of intuition for that young driver been watching gregson try to hold off little now little's going to work down to the inside gregson is in the wall pounds the wall coming out of turn four and that's going to bring out the caution right in front of us parker yeah definitely a right front issue once again we saw how 
where he was running as well up high. But, I, you know, I just have to wonder with as little practice as these guys had and as little rubber was on the racetrack when we started this race, these, these tires just got abused a little bit there. And for some of these drivers, a little bit inexperienced here at Dover, they weren't sure exactly how hard they could push that right front. And this is the result. Well, let's explore the other possibilities, too, as we take another look at this. Right out of turn four, straight up to the wall, you called it. Oh, very hard hit. And that that's, thankfully, Dover has put that safer barrier there out of the turn that, that wasn't it. there earlier yep. this year. They extended it. And that's one thing that really helped him have a, a lot softer hit there because that's the worst place. You're in the throttle, full, fully in the throttle at that time, coming out of the corner and to have the right front fail on you. It's a very helpless feeling as you go towards the wall. And there's a couple things that can cause that. You mentioned the green racetrack, um, but perhaps aggressive setups. But even suspension parts can sometimes get into these tires, Parker. There's no doubt at this place you absolutely pummel the suspension as you fly off in these corners from what seems at times like a drop into the corner and it compresses your spine as a driver and that you can know that that same force is going through the race car at the same time. It's an incredibly aggressive racetrack. Halfway break, championship has been decided, but there's a whole lot more racing to see who will win at Dover. Welcome back to Dover, and the story of the day was Kyle Benjamin trying to chase down Justin Haley, and he took a pretty good shot at it, Parker, when he got around him for the lead right here. He did what he had to do. That's to go out there and lead laps and try and win this race. It's the only way that this was really going to put the championship in his sights, but then Noah Gregson had a tire go down there off turn four, which brought out our caution. And just another one of the cars that have dropped out of the event, giving the championship clinching it for Justin Haley. Enough cars have gone away. Uh, Benjamin basically needed 29 points or 30 points to get beyond him. And with this many cars dropped out at this point, Haley is the champion. But I think, I think he'd want to win the race too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Before the race, talking to him, he said he wanted two things, and that's two trophies. So he <laughs> knew he, he could get the championship, and the best way to do that was to just go out and win as well. Derek, what did the front group do as far as adjustments on this halfway caution? Guys, just a quick update. After that halfway break around lap 64, your leader, the number 40, Kyle Benjamin, talked to the crew chiefs. They said they just needed to free the car up a little bit for the second half. Second place was Justin Haley. They said the car was good. They just took tires and fuel, a slight air pressure adjustment, but nothing too major. Third place was Colin Cabry in that number two. He says he needs to feel a little more free up off the corner. Fourth spot is Brandon McReynolds in the number 21. They just took on tires and fuel, quick stagger adjustment, nothing major. And the 29 of Jesse Little said the car feels good, tires and fuel, that's all they took. Thanks for those updates, Derek. Trying to get those cars just right to tame the monster. Back under green at Dover. Another great restart by Kyle Benjamin from that inside line. Got a big jump on Justin Haley as we went off to the turn one. Side by side, Cabri in the two, McReynolds in the 21. Behind them, Jesse Little all the way up to fifth from a starting spot of 19th. Well, as you see Kyle Benjamin here kind of drive away a little bit just off the initial start, I want to go back to what Derek said and that the five didn't make a lot of adjustments. Well, when I watched that first half, the 40 really had the five beat. That worries me a little bit going into the second half. He's caught up with Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson in the number 55 car hit the wall hard coming down the front straight away. Can you tell us what happened from your point of view? Yeah, we, we were having a really good run there, um, running fifth. Just messing up on the restarts, but uh, we had a really fast car. Speed Vegas, Ford Fusion was on rails today, and that's all thanks to my guys at Jefferson Fitz Racing. Uh, coming out of four, uh, I thought I got hit on the left side, and uh, it was really the right front that went down. and uh, ended up smacking the wall pretty hard on the right front uh, area, and, and it hurt pretty bad. Uh, that's my first right front go down. but. Uh, we had a really good run going, really solid day, and uh, just really bummed for my guys. They worked really, really hard and uh, wanted to end this one out uh, on the East Coast. So just a bummer, but uh, we'll go on to the next one in the West. Uh, sucks we ended our, our season on the East uh, like this, but we'll go on to the next one, and uh, I just had a blast out there. I was having really fun. Tough break for Noah Gregson. He ends his season in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East behind pit wall. Yeah, Derek, he's got one more race in the West Series. 
but he's run both ends of the country, which has been good experience for him. But he, oh, Whoa. my goodness, Haley with a nudge from Cabri. <laughs> now that is the bump and run Dover style <laughs> right there. That's a very aggressive move by Colin Cabri there on Justin Haley. And a lot of times would result in a wreck. This place with the the, the air that you have, it's tough to even get to the bumper of the car in front of you. So I'm impressed by Colin Camber even getting there in a very aggressive move. Wow, nice save and championship form by back at Dover. And while we were away, Cody Rohrbaugh found trouble and was in the wall in the seven car. His day is done. Not so much for Kyle Benjamin in the black 40 and Colin Cabri in the white number two. And Benjamin gets another good restart. Yeah, if Colin Cambry is going to want to fight for, contend for this win, he's going to have to show up these restarts. Whoa, McReynolds goes up the racetrack. He's got an issue. Yeah, way up the racetrack. That right front looks down, Parker. Yeah, that's another one. And if you notice, the racetrack is gray again. All the rubber gets wiped off the racetrack or picked up when they get under caution. And once again, that can just very much abuse these right front tires here at Dover. So it takes the track back to its most abrasive level, right? Exactly. That's that's essentially what happens is once you pick up that rubber, it's like going back to a green racetrack and you're really punishing that right front from the start. And sometimes, you know, one thing setup wise you hear a lot of these drivers talk about is that being tight can almost lull you into a false sense of security at Dover because it allows the car to be on the right front, which is comfortable. But then at the same token, it's abusing that right front. And that's why we can see problems like we're seeing here today. So McReynolds to pit road to change at least that tire. You can change the tire that has an issue in this series. You can't put on a new set as you might in some of the upper tier series. And we look back at a battle between Eddie McDonald and the 39 of Chad Fincham. And Dave, I'm just noticing there's a bit of front end damage there for Chad Fincham right there in the nose. And that's really going to hurt him arrow wise here. You, you need every bit of arrow around this place. It's a very fast racetrack. You see him get a little bit out of shape out of four. I think he's going to struggle here because that can minimize your front downforce, which will make the car even tighter and unable to turn. And Garcia is going to get around him for eighth position. That good looking number six about once a year. Rev Racing runs that Sunoco paint scheme. And it's with Garcia here this weekend. It's a great looking car, but it, we look here at Chad Fincham, he's really struggling. I gotta think that front end damage is hurting him a tremendous amount now, just knowing that that's a very crucial area on the race car, aero wise. And when it's dented in and bashed up like that, and the air is going in under the hood, it's uh, really gonna affect your handling. Have we had a chance to talk about Chase Dowling there in the white number 31 down to the inside? His first start in the series runs the Northern Modified Tour uh, most of the year. Whoa, and that was a very close call there on the inside of Hunter Bays. He actually got a little bit of the apron, which is really an unsettling thing to do here because there's a massive difference between the actual banking on the racetrack and the apron here at Dover. And he got on the inside of Hunter Bays. He really got very loose and was able to hold on to it. But where he's at right now, being on the bottom side by side, at some point when you don't have the positive momentum, you've got to get back behind Hunter Bays there. You see him get loose once again and make another run at it. It's all Oh my oh gosh, man. that's very loose. This is dirt track in there. Do we need to remind him he's not in a modified right now? <laughs> it's fun to watch, think... but I don't know if that's the way to get to victory lane. Yeah, I don't even think a modified gets that sideways, even those big tires I have on there. This is this is definitely new for him. But what he's experiencing right there yep. is what we talk about all the time with side force. And when you take the air off the right side of a race car and it's relying on so much, it will almost jump out from the driver. And that's what we're seeing Dallin go through right now as he slides it again. He had to be careful, though, punishing that right rear tire, mm -hmm. knowing that we've got to be on this set of tires till the end. Riley Herbst in the 16 gets by, and now Tyler Hughes in the 08 will make the pass as well if he can get the momentum off this corner. A little contact right there. <laughs> oh, man, he's he's definitely searching right here. And one thing I would say is, you know, at this point in time, for, it's only for a young driver to learn, but right now he's on the bottom. He's struggling handling-wise, and these cars are going around him on the top. At some point, you secede the position. You move up, try to change your line like basically allow that right that right rear to cool down and make another run at it. McReynolds had problems, Derek. Guys, this is the tire that came off the number 21 car, Brandon McReynolds, running in the top five when it happened. Unfortunately, he ran over a piece of debris out there, cut a tire, and that took him out of the race right now. They came in, put a new tire on, and he's trying to make up all of those positions right now. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, so unfortunate for him because, as we mentioned, every time they've entered that 21 car this year, it has been quick. 
He was really impressive driving through the field to get into the top five. He even had a really good restart there, but as he went off into turn one, obviously he'd run over something. And, and as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, you know, you see all that debris up at the top of the racetrack and how it, it gets forced up there. But when you get under caution, as you come down pit road, you're on the apron, you might be you might end up running over something. And that's just what probably happened there for Brandon Reynolds. Herbst in the 16, now working over Fincham for 11th position. Going to fall in line behind him now. But that battle continues. And yeah, we continually see Fincham almost like a wounded animal here getting taken up by Prey. It's, uh, you know, it's just a tough situation that he finds himself in, trying to use different lanes on the racetrack to aid the handling of that race car that's so obviously damaged in the front end. And these other drivers are going to definitely be able to get big runs on him as he struggles to get that car turned into the center. So 23 laps to go. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon for the finale of the k &M Pro Series East. It's the Dover 125, and Kyle Benjamin is way out front right now trying to hold off the rest of the field as we see these battles. And Colin Cabry has found the wall in the two car. Cabry, last year's winner. And it looks like, Parker, that right front area again. That's unfortunate. We know, as you said, he was last year's winner. He brought the same car and same setup this week, thinking that they could have a similar run, but... Right now, it looks like Kyle Benjamin way out in front as we go off in turn one here. Colin Cabry in second. As you see, oh, yeah, right there. That's where that right front goes down. Goes in a hard hit in the wall. And it just, I can't emphasize enough how fast these drivers are going around this place. And when you have these right front issues like they're having, it's very, very unsettling for a race car driver and to have that happen and be suddenly helplessly going towards the wall. Well, good to see him walk out of there. And Parker, sometimes it's just luck of the draw. He told me last year when he won, he was driving through stuff all day. Remember, they were trying to work in this race between hurricanes last year. So it <laughs> seems to be a regular theme here in the k &M Pro Series East. Kyle Benjamin out front under caution. Back at Dover getting ready for the restart with 16 laps to go. The championship has been clinched by the five of Justin Haley on the outside, but does he have anything for Kyle Benjamin, who gets another great restart? Just seems like that outside line cannot compete on these restarts here today. Not once have we seen an outside line car be able to contend with the leader, and a lot of times fall back to third as we see Justin Haley fall back to third. That's right. Jesse Little moves through to take second, and now from 19th to P2, Little is on the charge. And you've got Harrison Burton there racing side by side with Dominic Van Wurgen. Oh, wow. She gets a little loose up the racetrack, but makes the pass and even has a little bit of damage there on the left front that they've repaired. Yep. And now Ruben Garcia looking to the inside of Eddie McDonald. How much muscle will he use on the 71? Looks like a pretty clean pass. Yeah, this should be pretty or fairly easy there. After a restart, you've picked up the rubber. That bottom line is going to have all the grip and be the fastest place to be until that rubber gets laid back down. Garcia on pace to have his best career finish in the KNN East Series. Derek has more on the 71 of McDonald. Eddie McDonald is known as one of the old masters of the NASCAR KNN Pro Series East. He was around when the series was called the Bush North Series, and he's got a lot of laps around the Dover Speedway here. He started. 10. He said over the radio, after they came back from the break and made the adjustments that they needed on the car, the car just came alive and he started going to the front. Well, Derek, that's what you like. <laughs> adjustments in the right direction. <laughs> Definitely. And he finished second in this race last year after starting 23rd, so we know he knows how to drive to the field and take care of those tires. But obviously, with all the experience he has, he knows exactly the feel he needs to be able to get through this field and contend for the win. Look at Dominique peeking to the outside. She is not unfamiliar with high bank racetracks, has raced the short ones, Salem, Winchester, and Haley looking to keep things, I think, bigger picture right now. Sees her go by. She was getting pretty aggressive there. Very impressive pass around the outside. Was able to kind of pack the air on the right rear quarter panel of Haley, get him a little bit loose, drive around him, and even with that little bit of left front damage on her car, she's found some speed for sure in moving around the racetrack. Harrison Burton will take a look at fighting for that fourth position. Back here, the battle for six between the six car, Ruben Garcia, and McDonald's going to come back on the inside. This is a nice little tussle. Yeah, this is great. This is classic Dover racing. You see a, a car maybe do almost a crossover move, come from the top, cut back under with the momentum to the bottom, and use that momentum to get the pass done in the next corner. That's what Eddie McDonald did. And we know he knows exactly how to do that. See Dibble back there in the black 38. Started fifth today. Really hasn't had the car to contend, but it looks like the halfway break adjustments may have helped him a bit. 
Well, as, as much as it's helped him, it may have hurt Ruben Garcia here, who seems to be going backwards a little bit and falling into the clutches as Dipple. But as you said, those adjustments in that halfway break are so crucial. And that's why we talk so often about that first half of the race. You need to be thinking ahead. You need to be thinking to that second half of the race because of situations like this, where Dipple has maybe made the right adjustments and now has found exactly what he needs in his race car to be able to make passes and drive to the field. Under 10 to go for Kyle Benjamin, who is carrying more than just the weight of winning this race today. The Wilmington, Delaware Fire Department had a huge loss this week, and two of their firefighters were killed in the line of duty. He runs their logo on the hood. We'll get a good look at that a little bit later, but the 40 car trying to win for a really good cause here today. And that's a great message and a great move by that race team to support our finest. As we know in NASCAR, we continually support our armed forces and especially America's finest and cops. And oh, wow, Dipple gets very loose there and our firefighters. And so hopefully that 40 car can get to Vritchie Lane for those. Tyler Dipple collects it. Tyler Hughes is by the six of Garcia. So Garcia was looking at perhaps a career best finish. Now he's got to find a little something with just six laps to go this time by. And he's going to get by Hughes, who didn't have a good exit of that corner, did he? We've seen that a couple times. And you know what? I love these bias ply tires for that reason right there, is how absolutely sideways they can get these race cars because of the forgiveness of those bias ply tires and then be able to gather it up and keep going. We don't see that so often in the truck series, the Xfinity or the Sprint Cup series on radial tires because they just don't have that same forgiveness. So Harrison Burton makes a move here on A. McDonald. Harrison didn't have the season he wanted here. Had some mechanical issues that uh, put him in a bad way, but having some good super late model runs has won in those series and a couple of big races yet for him this year and he's going to start a truck race at martinsville uh, dad jeff told me a little while ago he's actually and still only 15 years old i got to spend a little bit of time with harrison this season and one thing that's really struck me about him is that 15 oh, years old off oh, turn got... four someone else has pounded the wall it's tyler hughes sorry oh, parker no. yeah no worry it, it looks like another issue there for the right front if you see there it's just this is, uh, this is a product of how fast they're going around this racetrack, a day in which there's been a lot of weather issues, there's not a lot of rubber on the racetrack, and you can get some times where the wear is just so high that if you're not perfectly set up or the car's a little bit tight, you can abuse that right front too much. We see him over to the right of the screen. He'll be already up. It was actually in turn three where he caught the wall and then uh, just glanced back into it off of turn four. But we said, Parker, there's a number of reasons why this can happen. You can run over something. Uh, extreme tuning can be an issue there. Um, or even some of the suspension parts at these high angles and, and aggressive setups can get into the tire. Definitely, and that's the thing. You know, you can have too much camber. You can have where the tire is even rubbing a little bit on the suspension. But at the end of the day, a right front issue is a right front issue. If the tire is going down, it's never a fun place to be at somewhere as fast as Dover is. Well, that sets up a green-white checkered for these drivers. It's traditional. They'll make three attempts at a green-white checkered. Kyle Benjamin, the 40, with the advantage on the inside. And look at Jesse Little. On the outside in the 29, his teammate, Dominique Van Weerigen, starts third on the inside. And the champion, Haley, to the outside. Here they come back to Dover. Green for, will it be the final time? We'll see. Another great restart there on the bottom for Kyle Benjamin, but actually one of the best restarts we see on the top by Jesse Little, but he wasn't able to hang on the right rear quarter panel of Kyle Benjamin like he had hoped, and now he has to settle behind in second. Holloman out of the groove in turns one and two. Will it bring out the caution? Doesn't look like it. He gets it back down to the bottom of the racetrack, so they continue under green, coming to the white flag now for Kyle Benjamin. Hey, McDonald out of shape there. Looks like Ruben Garcia got him off turn four. We've got a wreck on the front stretch, Dave. Now, the leaders have taken the white flag, so as they head down the backstretch, if this doesn't get cleaned up to NASCAR's satisfaction, they'll have to throw the caution, but they chase down the backstretch now. Benjamin still with the advantage over Little, and the caution is going to come out. NASCAR says it's not safe down on the front straightaway, and so Kyle Benjamin will be declared the winner. You see the checkers and the yellows at the same time here. That happened last week in the West Series, and that's how NASCAR does it. Their first attempt was the final at a green-white checker, Parker. Yeah, once they're able to get to the white flag, that's considered official there. They, NASCAR did all they could to try and end the race under green, but it wasn't to be as they had the four-car Valley Kearns stuck on the front stretch. There is the winner of the race, Kyle Benjamin in the 40. There is the 2016 NASCAR Canaan Pro Series East champion, Justin Haley. And he had to wait a bit, Parker. He knew early on, but he kind of had to wait to see what would happen here at the end. This is what brought the caution out at the end. 
Yeah, you're going to see Ruben Garcia just gets into the left rear as he's trying to make a move on Eddie McDonald. Eddie McDonald gets forced up the race track, hits the outside wall. Ali Kern comes up on him, gets moved to the inside, and Chad Fincham had nowhere to go there as Ali Kern came down the racetrack in front of him. Just one of those instances where there was a lot of cars going for the same real estate and a bit of a checkup off of turn four where they're all trying to stay hard in the gas to get the best finish possible. Garcia trying to move through on that low line. Man, McDonald takes a flush hit right there. Thanks again for that safer berry that was added. Looks like Kern was just trying to avoid really Parker yeah and that can happen as you're coming down the racetrack there and, and coming off turn four the car is really light and as you she tried to turn really hard down the racetrack the car just got away from her and down in front of Chad Fincher but there's your 2016 champion Justin Haley celebrating in, in good fashion doing some donuts there for the fans and there's Kyle Benjamin the winner of the race needed 29 points or more today wasn't able to get it and outlast this driver the five of Justin Haley we'll be back to talk to those drivers and more at Dover when we return. KN Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by KN High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. Welcome back to Dover. There is Victory Lane and Kyle Benjamin waiting to get out and talk to the crowd. Actually, I think he'll talk to Derek first. But two winners today, and we talked about Haley trying to get both trophies. Benjamin's going to get one of them. He's with Derek. Kyle Benjamin picks up win number three here at the Dover International Speedway. A good, strong run for him. They used the exact same car all season long. How good was that car today? Because Marty Lindley said, you guys have got a dog that'll hunt. Uh, it was really good today. It's been good, like you said, all season long. Same car has ran every single k and race. Luckily, it hasn't been destroyed. It's, it's my baby now. It's uh, We've been through a lot together, and uh, it's been a good season. I hate to leave it behind. Um, but, you know, I, I can't say enough about all the guys giving me such a great car here at Dover. Um, like, I mean, it's been a great season, really consistent, and uh, I felt pretty good about our chances in practice. We can't say enough about the whole crew and Marty Lindley, uh, but they're an awesome group of guys. Justin Haley had strong chance to win the championship today. You gave him the toughest run for your money. What was the hardest part about chasing him all season long? Uh, it was pretty difficult. You know, he has a lot of experience. He's been here for a while. Um, he's a good driver. Uh, obviously, he's in the uh, Camping World Truck Series now, too, so congrats to him on that. And congrats to him on the championship, by the way. But uh, uh, it was really tough. We did all we could do tonight, and that was go out and uh, lead as many laps as we can and uh, win the race. And it happened that he finished uh, somewhere in the top five, so that wasn't going to cut it for us with getting the championship. But congrats to him. Well, both title contenders go out on a high note. Kyle Benjamin wins the race. Justin Haley wins the championship. It's a happy young man right there, Parker. Great sportsmanship right there to congratulate his competitor, Justin Haley, on a season well done and also a season that Kyle Benjamin can be really proud of. See, the final results, Ruben Garcia Jr. did get his best finish of fifth right there in his first season in KN, and Chad Finley came out with a 10th place finish. Dominic Van Wergen there in third place. Really impressive run by her with a car that had a little bit of damage. And drivers near the back who had trouble today, a lot of right fronts cut down from a number of reasons, and they ended up in the wall. Again, thankfully, a lot more safer barrier at Dover than there used to be helped these drivers walk away from all of those incidents. Here's Derek. Well, Jesse Little comes all the way from 19th, and he almost had him, as he says. And how good was that race car this afternoon for only running a couple of races this year? Yeah, it was it was fantastic, man. I can't thank my Red Jones Racing guys enough. Um, John Dodson, Doug Wolf, all the students and faculty at NASCAR Technical Institute gave us a beautiful engine for today. k and I I can't thank everybody enough for the sponsors. Um, we uh, we had a blast today. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, it, was, it was always fun coming through the field and uh, doing it the last race of the year at Dover. It's, it's a blast. I can't ask for anything better. My family's been great. Sponsors have been amazing. So I'm looking forward to the off season and regrouping and coming back next year. Did you get nervous on that last restart, knowing it was going to be a green white checkered, or did you look at it as this is going to be my only shot? Uh, yeah, look at as I knew it was going to be my only shot. The 40's been uh, very, very fast all year, so I knew I only had one shot at him, and that was probably going to be it. So uh, I, I gave him my all. He, was, he had a fantastic car, um, but like I said, it was fun, and I think the, uh, the faster car won today, and I'll take that any day. So I uh, can't thank my guys enough. Like I said, it's been a blast all year, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting back together and regrouping and going to have some fun next year. Jesse Little finishes the season off on a strong note. 
Thanks, Derek. And Parker, given the track and how few races he's run this year, how impressive was that? Very impressive, and mostly I can tell you that he talks about having so much fun, and I can tell you as a driver, when you have a car that can pass as many cars as he did and do it with ease, that is incredibly fun. That's exactly what you want in a race car, and that ends up with a really good day for Jesse Little. There you see the final championship margin, 22 points, Haley over Benjamin and the rest of the field, and Derek has caught up with the champ. Well, guys, at just 17 years old, Justin Haley joins Kyle Larson, Ryan Truex, Joey Logano, Dylan Kwasniewski, and Ben Rhodes as champions of the NASCAR k and Pro Series. The pressure is off. You got to tell me what's going through your head right now. Yeah, there's a lot of stress involved with the uh, points race in there, so I got to give it to these Ace Scott Justin Marsh guys. You know, there was uh, 14 races and 13 top fives, so that's pretty incredible in itself. Um, you know, the consistency was there. We won two races, and here we are at Dover and had another solid run. So um, I'm very thankful that God put me in this position, and, uh, you know, hopefully next year opens another door for me. Now, last year when you ran during the season, you were kind of an also-ran, ran in the top ten, a few top fives here and there. This year, you guys were a threat to win every single week. What was the change? Yeah, um, you know, it's all done in the shop. Uh, you know, we brought incredible cars off the trailer every week, so that helps a ton. We don't have to change much of the racetrack, and uh, just, again, consistency is key, and I got a hell of a team behind me, so I'm just very thankful to be where I am. There's been a lot of great names that have won championships in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East and moved on. What's your next step from here? I don't know, hopefully something good. I hope I'm not sitting on the couch next year, so uh, we, uh, we'll try to piece something together and uh, you know, hopefully make it up to the top. Race winner, title contender, and now Justin Haley is a champion of the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. You know, pretty cool, Derek. You may want to duck and cover. There's a lot of bubbly over there on the wall uh, <laughs> that's about to be used for this champion here. Well, there's more touring series racing on NBCSN coming up, including the finale for the Wheelan Southern Modified Tour on the quarter mile, the front stretch at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. That'll be Friday the 14th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We thank you for joining us all season long in the East Series. It was a good day here this afternoon, Parker, and the fact that they got the race in was one thing, but then that Haley ran strong and showed again why he's the champion. He did exactly what he's done all season. That's run up front, be consistent, and take what the day would give him, and that was a top five here today, but also a championship for Justin Haley. And stayed out of trouble because there was a lot of it out there, even right down to the end. Definitely some tense moments there for a lot of the racers, especially Justin fighting for that championship, seeing what was happening to the right front tires, but they were able to hold on like they have all season. When it was all over, Justin Haley was the champion for the season in the k and series. For Parker and Derek, I'm Dave saying thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.